you know, it's considered in all of the things that are before the, uh, the ordinance committee and the city council. Um, so I, I think if we could summarize that whole package of ideas, um, you know, I don't think there is that much difference between the two options as presented. So it really is more a question of is the current zoning appropriate? Um, and, and as you all pointed out, you know, there is the whole political element to it too and the other negotiations that are happening. So as he said, they'll listen to us by taking into consideration some of the other factors. So I think that that type of uh, um, it's not a recommendation, really. It's just more communication, communication correspondence. Yeah. So, yeah. Nico? So I, I would support a recommendation against this petition with an explanation that from a planning perspective, so not from a weighing public benefits against the benefits developer perspective, that this is inherently flawed because it's seeking to zone a particular parcel, and we've noticed an increase in the number of that that we find to be difficult to evaluate as a planning board right. without being able to consider things like the letter of commitment that in all of the public benefits of the state have to be able to. And so I, I would I would support a recommendation that says from a planning perspective we are opposed but that makes no comment as to weighing like, the public benefits against the benefits of the developer. I don't know, why would we take that on this particular development? Uh, why would we decide to do this tonight? Um, this is, uh, aren't these uh, single proposals on these lots that are just a uh, reflection of the built environment and smaller parcels coming to well, I, I would I would take exception to that, Lou. We we have been bringing this up on every one of these, and, 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 and Frank, no, and, and uh, I uh, personally signed a couple of negative recommendations that were at least in part based on that that is a bad planning practice recently. Well, we've changed this area several times. I mean, there's been a lot of changes in the case zone, right? and they're usually parcel by parcel. And I don't disagree with you that it's probably not a good way to do it, but it seems to be a long way down this road for this to happen now. But Frank just and I, three years ago, when the envision process was put forward, I thought there would be some response to these kinds of questions. Is in the work plan for further studies to be done. Whether looking at this question in this area is on that list or not, I don't know. Um, I haven't gone through the PDF, but I'm still looking at your book. Yes, you're on. One thing regarding the question related to um, the zoning petitions that we see that are parcel by parcel or block by block kind of uh, an approach. And I think that is, a, I'm trying to think the best way to say this because I haven't prepared it at all, but um, it's an approach that has evolved over the last. Um, 10, 12 years in Cambridge, because back when I started working here, when we first did the citywide planning, we went out and did a rezoning petition that impacted the whole city, and it was um, adopted based on its planning parameters. Um, we did the same thing with, with ECAPS and in Eastern Cambridge. Um, it might have been actually the first the first Alexandria petition that changed that, wherein there was a petition that reversed something that had been done based on the planning process, um, but it was more of a, a negotiated process and sort of a, what is called contract zoning, um, and it essentially looked at this 
proposal that's different from where we were. And as a rationale for making those changes, the city council thought about what public, what additional public benefits that particular rezoning would result in. Um, that was one of the first letters of commitment as well for uh, for us in, in recent times. Um, and what has evolved from that is that we have the the council has gotten exceptionally good at being able to negotiate public benefits beyond what we have been able to do through the planning processes, which is why um, I think the board actually recommended when we did K2C2, we have been here, uh, and we brought forward the Kendall Square recommendations, the board suggested that instead of the, the city or staff, advancing those um, as a zoning petition, that it would make more sense for each of the property owners to in fact be the proponents and take that forward so that the council could, while using the, the planning as a base, could build upon that and then have these conversations that were more granular that involved a conversation about public benefits. Um, so that has, again, not to say that there, there is a, a, this is a good or a bad, but that is the, that's the story arc of what brings us here. Um, and so this is not something that is a, um, an, an unusual or unanticipated, or in fact the way that uh, Envision speaks to rezonings is that it lays out um, the set of criteria or sort of the set of priorities and said that as council and planning board consider rezoning petitions, here's the values that they should use as such points and go back to. And this project, I mean, this proposal might not stand the test of that either, because that does have a strong emphasis on, on housing. But uh, but that's kind of the approach that's proposed in, in Envision as well. So just for background, I wanted to make sure that I say that so that um, we at least are all on in a shared place in terms of what has brought us here. And if we want to do something differently as a as a board and as a council, then certainly that is something that staff can can work on in, in more detail. But that will that there will be a process to get us to that point. Uh, that's certainly helpful context for, for me to have, I, not having been involved at the time of K2C2. Um, it never would have occurred to me that anyone would have encouraged individual owners to bring mm -hmm. zoning petitions for individual parcels. Um, and I will say that on the ILWIF working group for Envision Cambridge, uh, there was lots of talk of what the zoning should be and at no point did I at least hear outwardly discussed that we were talking about zoning individual parcels and making letter of commitment to contract zoning with each of them in order to achieve those goals. So that is helpful to know and seems like a bigger planning issue to me. The final proposal in Central Square was the exact outcome that uh, Yeah, I, I agree with that. So I think the since this apart from some of the earlier ones, I see the other ones had essentially negotiated plan unit development districts, and they covered a substantially more area. Um, everyone is correct that, that this board um, encouraged since in K2 MIT had a lot of land, Volpe had a lot of land, um, and the CRA had a lot of land, um, that working, all of them had enough land to be considered a PUD. So I think that was why I wanted to work directly with them rather than to try to work in opposition with them. So this is, this represents another step. Yes. And then sometimes it's a smaller step. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I, I would agree with you, Hugh. I think there is um, 
you know, the, uh, the smaller piece of property we're dealing with, the more it feels inappropriate to zone it individually. And so to the extent you're talking about a bulky sized parcel, which might house you know, six or seven buildings and have many amenities, or the MIT six building, you know, then it, it, it not only feels differently, it is treated differently by the law. Um, and uh, so uh, notwithstanding the fact that there was a certain amount of conscious uh, intention to deal with owners individually, um, I, I do think that when we get down to individual parcels and one building, that they, we're in a different place. I just want to add that I just don't feel like we have the institutional capacity to really do this effectively. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are not negotiating the letter of commitment, and yet we are being asked to evaluate the public benefits that yeah. these uh, that this zoning amendment is offering. I, I, that just seems like an impossible task. I, I totally agree that it, it, it essentially by moving that part of the discussion to just the legislative process, then we have gotten essentially out of the business of planning. Uh, you know, if, if, if we're talking about a special permit with criteria for public benefit or something like that, then we're looking at something that we can make planning decisions where we say that there's going to be a separate letter negotiated. I don't feel like we are. I also think this feels different from the others in that the proponent could do what he wants now under zoning, and they're just saying, I want more. And so it really becomes just a contract zoning of, well, if you want more, what are you giving us in return? And it, it really is not the planning issue because the planning issue is that you put industrial there and you could do what all the abutting properties have done. You can put office, you can put lot up to a certain height and up to a certain density. And just saying, I want more, is, you know, I, I didn't think it's, I, I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong because I think there are political issues mm -hmm. for the legislative body to decide whether they want to go that way. Okay. Um, so having hashed this out a, a, a good amount, I feel like we're unlikely to come to a consensus here. Um, so I would recommend we um, ask the staff to forward a communication to the city council saying that we are not forwarding a, a recommendation, but um, listing both the items of concern across the board and the items that some board members felt were worthy of support and, and uh, aspects of the project that were very beneficial. Um, does that seem like a, an appropriate course of action to board members? Okay. Um, Jeff, do you have what you need? Do we need to be more specific than that before? Uh, I, I can probably do that. I wanted to give just a just jump in with a sense of the timing. So this is a refiled petition. And yep. it has it, this is the first hearing. Of, this is the hearing planning board. Then it has its ordinance committee hearing in July sometime. I think I want to say it's July 11th, something like that. It, at this stage, we're unlikely to get a formal report to the city council by the summer meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so this this still has time on it, and obviously, if the planning board feels like you said as much as you're going to say on the matter tonight, yeah. then that's fine. But I just wanted to point out that it it is still early in the process. Um, I think we we have in the past put together reports that didn't make a recommendation one way or the other, and um, yeah, we can try doing that if if it's something that you wanted us to draft and review at some point. I think could, that sounds wise. That, that was why the timing was mentioned. Because yeah, I we might be able that. to do that in the future. Yeah. So if, if you could um, uh, do a draft uh, for, for board review um, so that we do make sure that all perspectives are appropriately reflected, that would be great. Um, sounds like the timing on that will work out. Um, and, uh, so it's kind of interesting that they're really just two positions, and there's a position of the lawyers that we shouldn't be doing this, and there's a position of three of us, I'm not quite 
sure to think the community study of the lawyers, uh, you know, that, that we don't have a problem with contract zoning if looking at the results. So that's, that's an interesting distinction. And, and as you say, we're not going to be Yeah, I don't think we're going to convince each other. Obviously, if it, it being early in the process, if the petition were to change uh, substantially, or if there was agreement with reach with the neighbors, that would be something I think this board would want to know about, so that we could reconsider our, our uh, you know, whether we could reach a recommendation. Uh, just clarification: what would change that would change? I, I don't understand how it would change. We don't think we should do it. What would make it so we should do it? That's what's bothering me. Uh, I think, for for my part, uh, I I could if, if there was agreement um, with the neighborhood, uh, I would still note that I think it's objectionable uh, on its face, but that I could stand aside in that kind of situation from that. Um, that, that's just, yeah, no, I, it's a fair point. I mean, I do, it, 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 it's a philosophical question. I don't think we should be doing this. But if there were consensus reached, I would, or I would want to at least know um, and could conceivably stand aside if I if felt like, uh, the, and this goes to Nico's point about the letters, if the zoning reflected the kind of commitments and public benefit that we could count on. I know that it never does, right? It hasn't no, it, 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 it does sometimes. I mean, it... it, it Vaguely, I guess, it, is what I would say. Well, it depends on what... what but, you know, what, and it's all different every time. I agree. Anyway, I, I would want to know if the petition changed. <laughs> so I, I would uh, suggest something which is a game changer. Yes. Uh, which I'm sure Joe doesn't want to hear, which is Joe goes out and buys... Some more land to do a housing project. Uh, like say the courthouse. <laughs> I, I mean, that would be another thing that again gets to the question of is there actually a benefit in being proposed in a way that the board can evaluate that we can weigh against the zoning change at every request. So, um, in the meantime, I think we're asking for a non-recommendation report for the board to review uh, and eventually forward to the city council. All right. Uh, and, oh, Jeff, I needed to, before we're adjourned for the evening, I needed to throw it over to you. Yeah, one more small item of business. So I, we haven't had much of a chance to um, to talk formally, but um, in the back of the room at most of the meetings for the past two years, Shabna Vista has been um, our intern in zoning and development. Um, she <laughs> has guided us through a number of things, including the uh, video recording of planning board meetings. She's been the, the primary, um, I guess, videographer for the meetings over the past the two years-ish that we've been doing it. She also has been um, helping us process the massive amounts of information that comes into the planning board, getting it posted on the website. She spearheaded the updates that were made to the uh, special permits information that recently came into effect. And some of you know she's been helping us out on the Climate Resilient Zoning Task Force process. So um, she uh, just recently graduated um, from her program at Tufts, and she'll be starting a position at the city of Boulder, Colorado soon. So she'll be leaving us. All very sad to hear it. She will be here at the next meeting, but I wanted I wanted to do this tonight because um, give you a chance to talk to her before she goes, and also that next meeting might be. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for all you've done for the board. We really do appreciate it. All right, and with that, we are adjourned.